Good morning, WGO. I hope y'all are doing great. We are out here in Valle de Los Angeles. Oh, good Lord, I can't even say it, Valle de Angeles. And we are up on top of a mountain. Forgive me, the wind is blowing today and my microphone battery has died. So I apologize about that. But we have a really cool story. There's a guy wearing a Meridian, Mississippi t-shirt. If y'all don't know about Meridian, Mississippi, that is the birthplace of root beer. And I find that extremely cool. But this guy grew up in Texas and he is back here. He's a Honduran guy and he's back here for about the past eight years. And he's got such a cool story. Ryan and I have been chatting with him and connecting. So I'm going to turn it over to Ryan and we're going to hear just a really cool story about what's going on. So here is just the beautiful view that we've got. And so we've got Ryan. Ryan, talk to us a little bit. Well, I'm not part of the beautiful view, but I'm here <laughs> with, with my new friend Lou. Um, and uh, Lou and I found something very, uh, very much in common. Um, we both love the gospel. And uh, we, we both love uh, sharing God's word with people. And beyond that, we both love working with wood. And Lou here has been showing me picture after picture of, of all the different beautiful pieces of furniture that he's created. And um, for, for him, and, and I understand this as a woodworker, for him, it's kind of a spiritual thing. Every time he starts a piece of wood, he stops and he prays about it and he, and, and he seeks inspiration and, and as to how God would have him use that piece of wood. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a lesson that we all need to learn, that maybe we need to start everything we do with a prayer and say, how do you want me to do this in a way that's going to glorify you and, and, and reflect uh, your glory rather than my, my abilities or my, my talents. So, um, but Lou was sharing a little bit of his testimony with us, and, and we, we found that to be very, very impactful. We wanted to share that with you. So um, if you would, give your attention to my brother Lou here, and he's going to... Tell us about himself a little bit. God bless you guys. Well, uh, basically, like uh, Ryan was saying, every time I work a piece of wood, it's like uh, I see myself on it. Every time I, I can never do a, uh, something that doesn't look pretty or something that I'm not going to be proud of. Because uh, I see that that's how our Lord uh, did with me. He grabbed a piece of wood ugly piece of wood and he turned it into something beautiful i accepted our lord behind bars in a place called uh, guaymaca i used to be an alcoholic yeah i used to be an alcoholic and i tried to uh, quit drinking for like 10 years and i would drink uh from uh, thir uh tuesday through saturday and my wife, she went. Uh, she used to like uh, in, uh, invite me to church all the time, and I was like, "Yeah, there will be a day." I used to call myself a Catholic. That was my ex that was my excuse not to accept our our Savior, Lord Jesus. And uh, one one night, I got intoxicated, and I landed on my face, and they had to take me to the hospital. They thought I was dead, and they were taking me to the morgue. But a guy said, uh, "You know what? I think this guy still uh, still has pulse on him." And uh, so they brought me back to the uh, to the operation room. They pumped uh, my stomach, and they sent me with the uh, police officers to uh, to the police station. So I wake up in the morning, blood all over me. And I didn't know what I had done. I didn't know whether I had uh, harmed somebody or what did I do. My wife said, you know what, this is it. I'm gonna call it quits. We're gonna get a divorce. And I started crying. And uh, an old man whose face I don't uh, remember, but I do remember his voice, came up to me and he's like, what happened to you? And I explained to him. He asked me if I had accepted our Lord Jesus as my savior. I told him, yes, I'm a Catholic, of course. He's like, you think you're a Catholic, you're not. Nah. And he gave me a prophetic uh, word. He told me, I told him that I was the shame of my family, that nobody in my family wanted to be near me because I had done, I had hurt uh, my family so much. And he told me that I was gonna become uh, the light of my family, that they were gonna come to me for advice, and I almost uh, laughed at, at him, because I was like, nah, I don't think so. 
that day I accepted our Lord and I had warrants I had warrants so when they were going to release me they called Tegucigalpa to see about the warrants I had and they said uh, no he's clean but they didn't buy it and they were like uh, they called three different uh, branches of the police and, it, and nothing came on the computer that's when I realized that our Lord had started working on me and my wife she's like well yeah well we're still getting divorced and I'm like please don't take me to church I will go to church take me to any church you want and she's like no you're gonna find the church Christian church evangelistic church and you're gonna take me there and I was like so, okay so what do I do and I started I started driving around the town looking for a church and when I found one uh, I went in that day I remember that that evening they had to like pull me out of the church like we're about to close please get up and leave because I cried and I cried and I cried and I felt like all that crying not only dehydrated me but it also cleansed me from 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 all of my sins and we decided to move to Tegucigalpa and when we moved to Tegucigalpa we saw that it was like too noisy and it was it's, it's a jungle and we we're like so uh we need a peaceful place where you are not tempted by alcohol anymore and where you can have a a more uh clean environment and we moved to Valle de Angeles best decision ever and uh, we got a piece of, a little piece of land with our mother, with my mother and my sisters. We got a little piece of land down the, uh, the main road. And one evening we were, we were doing a, a spiritual retreat. We fasted for two days and two nights and we prayed up in that mountain. It's called Montaña Grande. That's like uh, uh, where the uh, cabbage uh, that is distributed into Gosigalpa is grown. So up there, I had a vision that I was going to be a carpenter. I told my wife, I said, okay, we should go in and we should go in and we should go I had a vision that I would become a carpenter and God is going to give me the, uh, the talent. She's like, no, you have to go. And I was like, she's like, are you lying to me again? Are you making promises that you're not going to keep? I'm not like, no. So ever since I've been working uh, wood, but my customers rely on my talent that uh, they, they tell me like, I would like to do this in my house. I tell them, okay, let me do, uh, let me pray and see what idea our father delivers to me and in the mornings i go to my shop i see the wood i lay my hand on it and i ask uh, uh, jesus christ for guidance then i get the design and so far all of my customers they come back and they send me more customers so i don't even have like a uh, facebook page it's been going uh, from uh, word of mouth and uh, right now I'm, I got many projects uh, going on in the shop and everybody's happy. Mama's happy, kids are happy and uh, my biggest uh, inspiration, well one of my biggest inspirations, um, my sister, she's, uh, she lives in Colorado, uh, she looks up to me now. She looks up to me now and almost on a daily basis uh, we communicate and, and we pray and uh, we, um, we have uh, come closer and we have bonded better ever since I accepted our Lord and she accepted our Lord. And uh, she couldn't have any babies. I don't know if this is too much info but she couldn't have any babies. But her baby, her baby's name is Samuel. Uh, the doctors told her that she couldn't have, she would never have be a mom. 
she will never have babies. So she was always like adopting puppies and she was always helping kids and everything, sponsoring kids. And one day she had a, my mother was given a prophetic word by a prophet. And he told her that my sister was gonna get pregnant. He gave her day and month and she, uh, she conceived. In the day and the month that the prophet told told uh, my mother, our mother, and uh, she decided to name the baby Samuel, like like uh, Anna and Penina's uh, story, mm -hmm. and uh, so the baby's name is Samuel. He's one year. Old. He's gonna turn a year old now. He's a beautiful baby, and he's humongous. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Luke.